Well, folks, I was going to do this all posh and shit uh, with the dog shit fucking GoPro. I can't remember which one that is. I'll bloop it down there. It's dog shit. I've just put a fully charged GoPro battery in it. Um, started recording. It lasted about a minute. Came up with an SD card error. I've since trying exactly the same SD card in this camera and it's fine. I've now put another SD card in and bear in mind it had a fully charged battery now the fucking thing won't turn on so um, I think it's a, a Hero 5 or 8 or whatever anyway dog shit utter dog shit this is the one I used on one of my last rides out and it completely shit itself so yeah GoPro utter dog shit I shall be saving up uh, for an Insta360 I think anyway Let's get back to the task in hand, and the task in hand uh, is this thing, Olive, uh, 1999 Aprilia Pegaso 650 single. Anyway, we have a no start issue, and um, historically with this bike, it's been breaking wood roof keys and stuff because the flywheel hub would, was actually egged out, so it wasn't um, staying on the crank properly. Uh, anyway, I've since put the original flywheel hub back on, as you've probably already seen in previous videos. This is a little catch-up for people that haven't seen them. Um, and it's been all right. The no start, all I did was take the tank off. And then it wouldn't start, because it's Italian and it's forever giving. Um, so, basically, I uh, checked the timing. But to check the timing, you need to take the flywheel off, really. Um, and I took the flywheel off, it was all fine. So... What I need to do now is get the tank off, which is a series of 8mm bolts, a 10mm bolt at the back, a fuel line, fuel sender wire, and that's your bobby. Um, I'm sort of hoping I've knocked a wire or something like that, but uh, somebody who watched one of the last videos, uh, they had a lot of trouble getting one of these started, and it turned out it was a Duff spark plug. So they put an Iridium one in, and they've had it, and uh, they altered some settings on the carpet tinkles and uh, basically they've had trouble free running for about the last three years so um this is the plan tank off uh, we're going to take the spark plug out because if you get right on top of the compression stroke it will go over that stroke with the compression so we've got to take the spark plug out so it can stay at top dead center we're then going to remove an m8 bolt from the side here mm. uh, put in my special locking bolt which just happens to be here it should be like that shouldn't it this is a high tensile m8 bolt and i've just chamfered the edge because i do believe it goes into the uh, crank webbing or something like that and locks it in top dead center because the locking nut the other side yep. Uh, has to go to 180 newton meters lock tighted and it's shit itself tight but that little bolt holds it uh, once that's all back together we can then uh, investigate start investigating the no start i prefer to put it back together leave it a while for the lock tight set ideally overnight it's a few hours but ideally overnight it's still early in the morning it's only about nine o'clock so um might get it all done today fingers crossed um and then we can start investigating the no start uh i have actually got the spare spark plug in not the new one so you know it could be that who knows what age the old plug was um fingers crossed it's something simple so I am going to crack on and I will bring you back when she's a bit more naked. Mmm, boobies. Bolts are out. Two at the top here. One, two, same again the other side. The other side you must use a short bolt. Don't do what I did and put a longer bolt in and nip the tank. <clears throat> anyway, that's all sealed with aircraft sealer and it's all good. Uh, the fuel line is disconnected. All we've got to do now, disconnect this, which is the fuel level sender. You don't have a fuel gauge. I think when you've got about, it's about a gallon left. 
uh, the fuel light will come on well it will start to glow and flicker on mm. and uh, if you're in sunlight or anything like this you can't read any of these idiot lights um, probably a good idea to replace the lot with LEDs if you ever get one the center tanks off of them, obviously <laughs> Duh, Jim. Um, the plugs out uh, the plug looked okay it was uh, wet with unburnt fuel which could just mean uh, oh, I don't know uh, I can't check the spark obviously until the um, uh, sparker maker happener is back on anyway we're at top dead center using the patented top dead center tool which I um, just rest there gently crank it over very gently if you feel any resistance or you know this jams bad um so like i say it doesn't hurt anything as long as you do it very gently you can use a wooden dowel or anything like that or cable tie whatever just find top dead center and then what we're going to do now take the m8 bolt out from the other side and hopefully when i shine a light in the little hole because there's no way you're going to see it is um we should be good enough to put the blanking bolt in uh, lock the crank shove all that shite together and then um, we can go about investigating lack of sparkage could be something simple like the coils fucked you know at the end of the day it's 25 year old bike it was laid up for 10 years with running problems which I believe was just the sprag clutch which we did um, so well we'll just carry on investigating and it's uh, it's quite therapeutic, really. No, it isn't. It's a pain in the arse. No, Jim, it's therapeutic. Positive attitude and all that. So the bolt that you need to remove and look into with a torch, preferably, um, to lock the bike in top dead centre. Um, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy once you know where it is, like everything else. Um, you'll see nearly all the cover bolts are all the same uh, but this one is bigger See that, that little fella there look that little bugger and hopefully I've got the right Alan hi Jim my name's Alan yep got the right Alan so I'll whip that out put the blanking bolt in it doesn't need to be gorillaed super tight just put it up to the web because it's going into a little recess so just you know nip, <laughs> nip it up and then believe it or not and that's enough to hold the crank for 180 newton meters on the other side oh i don't like that bit it feels it feels you know it's like sketchy 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 click oh it's there it's very you know <laughs> it's effing tight basically right locking bolts in we can now commence to reassemble the other side yes all back together torque wrench is now set to 180 newton meters and this is where i soil myself now i don't know where to put you uh, let's put you on a foot peg no 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 oh, hell. no oh, for fuck's sakes anyway i'm going to tighten that to 180 newton meters uh, See you shortly, if I haven't soiled myself. Beautiful. I about shit myself there. Um, when you're looking, putting the locking bolt in, um, what you're looking for is that you will see uh, the crank, and what you're looking for is a tiny little cutout as it comes through. So if you can't see it, if it looks like a plain face, um, what I do is because there's no plug in it it's dead easy to turn over is while you're around that side with the torch looking in put the bike in gear and rock the back wheel until you can see the cutout when you line the cutout up with the hole then put the bolt in and just nip it up um, it's only going into the web a few mil but it's enough I mean you've just seen me I've just taught that to 180 newton meters and I possibly now need no underpants
try again, shall we? Filled the float bowls up. I think they were a little bit empty. Um, so we have a known good spark. We have known good compression. And we have now have fuelage. So uh, hopefully, mm, yes, uh, ASMR time. <laughs> I'm just not joke off. Well, it's running. I'm going to leave uh, all the uh, Loctite and shit to set for a few hours before I put everything back. But it's running. Jolly good. Um, end of video. Right. You know the news. Phyllis is fine. Mm. Got a tyre for the ZZR. Mm. Lovely. So as I'm... Flatulence. As and when I can be bothered, the front tire. <laughs> the fucking sign of that. Jesus, it's like a cancerous tumour on the bum of a chimp. Um, it might be an idea to let the fucking air out tire. Um, yes, when I've got time, I will whip the front wheel off, and then I'll have a, a friendly word with um, uh, Captain Redbeard, who does my tyres. And, uh, you know, no doubt it'll cost me a breakfast or something, but it's well worth it. Lovely. So, yes, uh, so hopefully Spurt will be back on the road soon, although I might leave him till spring. You know, give him a little rest. The only trouble is I do need to get some fuelage um, and, you know, run it up a few times, get the battery, um, give the battery a little boost charge every few weeks. If I'm going to lay her up, I think I am going to lay her up. Because at the end of the day, you know, we do have some lovely mild days. I've got Phyllis, I've got the Aprilia. Sorry, Olive. Yes, I'm not quite on first name terms with it yet. Um, I've never had such a modern, unreliable bike. But maybe it's because it had a lot of underlying issues from being stuck 10 years. Or maybe I'm a twat. The verdict is out. No, it isn't.